About four years ago, I made this workbench using some drawers, some salvage from an office clearance, plus one from my old kitchen, and some salvage plywood and framing timber. And it served me really well, but I wanted to make a new one, mainly because I wanted something lower to match the height of my new table saw so that I can use it as an outfeed table. And also something that suits my needs better now with more useful drawer space, and something mobile too so that I can move it around. Also, the old one was a bit of an ugly duckling, not that it really matters for something in a workshop, but anyway. I had some nice thick and chunky pieces of salvaged pine. This is the same stuff that I used to make my other workbench, the one with the MFT top, which was also covered as a build project on my channel. I'll leave a link to that in the description box if you're interested. This pine has lots of holes in it, but that doesn't really bother me. I designed what I wanted to make using SketchUp and plans for this build will be available for a small fee via my Etsy store or for free to my Patreon patrons. Link to both of those pages are in the description box. Those plans will differ slightly to what I'm making in this video though because I thought to make the plans more useful to anyone watching it'd be better to use dimensions for timber that can be easily bought off the shelf from any timber merchant or DIY store. And you get two versions of the plans, one with half lap joinery and a simpler one with butt joints which could be either screwed, doweled or dominoed. I started by cutting clean ends onto the pine and then cutting them to length based on the dimensions from my drawing. And then I started ripping them down to size at the table saw. I've not even been in the workshop for an hour yet and I've already made my first mistake and it's a pretty significant one. I was supposed to be making three panels of the workbench and I was going to be doing all of the joinery with half lap joints. I was planning to cut the half lap joints at the mitre saw but I've stupidly cut the horizontal pieces of each frame to the internal dimension that is between the uprights rather than accounting for the length of the timber with the half lap joints, which is a really silly mistake to make. Uh, so now plan B, uh, I think I'm going to use the domino to assemble each of the panels. Should still be plenty strong enough. Certainly won't be as strong as half lap joints would have been, but it is what it is. Here I'm assembling what will be the back frame and this is how the pieces will go together. I offered up some dominoes to decide where to put them and then I set my combination square so that I can mark them up repeatedly. Then I can line up the domino fence with my pencil marks and cut the mortises. And you'll see here that I'm flipping the workpiece and that's so that I can add four dominoes to each joint to make it stronger. Then I glue in all of the dominoes and pull together each of the panels with some help from Timmy Mallet. I use some parallel clamps to pull everything tight and wipe away excess glue with a wet cloth. And then I check each panel for square with my speed square before leaving the glue to dry. Once everything is out of the clamps, you'll see here that I have the framing for three panels, a large back panel and two smaller sides. And I can use offcuts of the pine from earlier to make two front rails, one at the top and one at the bottom. And to mark them for length, I just offered them up to the back panel and marked them up and cut them at the mitre saw. These rails will need some mortises too. And now it's time for my second mistake of the project. As you can tell, this project started pretty badly, mainly because I was rushing to try and get it done quickly, but don't worry, things get better from here onwards. I just had to have a few stern words with myself first. I added a roundover to ease over all of the sharp edges of the timber, 
But what I meant to do was only add that round over to the edges that wouldn't be joined to another piece of timber. But once I'd accidentally rounded over one of those edges, I basically thought, what the heck, I may as well round over all of them now, otherwise it'll look odd. So that's what I did. Not a huge issue, although it does mean there'll be fractionally less gluing surface, unfortunately, but it'll still be plenty strong enough. I then sanded everything with 80 grit. I didn't go any further than that. This is just a workbench after all. I've got some salvaged nine millimeter plywood here that I took from the crate that my new table saw got delivered in. It even had my name on it. I'm going to make use of this to complete the panels. I fitted a rebate bit into my router and set the bit to cut to the same depth as the thickness of the plywood. And then I can cut rebates that the plywood will later fit into. Here I'm just checking the depth as I wanted the panels to sit flush with the frame and it looked good so I cut the rest of them too. Before adding the panels, first I added some India ink to the pine frames to stain them black just to make them look a little less rough. I'm also going to use my dominoes to join the frames together. It'll just help align everything a little better, but there's not really any other reason to use them here as the glue alone would be more than strong enough to hold these frames together. Here I'm taking the lazy option for applying glue to the dominoes. Assembly was pretty straightforward. And while the glue was drying, I could cut my plywood panels to size. I also rounded over the corners at the disc sander so that the panels would push right into the rebates on the frames. I added some PVA glue and some brad nails to secure the plywood until the glue is dry. I applied a couple of coats of water-based varnish to everything. This will just help to keep the workbench clean over the years and a bit more durable. And then it was on to making the drawers and I'm just taking some measurements here because it's always best to use real measurements when fitting drawers rather than using the dimensions from my drawing in case there were any discrepancies with the measurements. I started ripping the drawer sides. I had these offcuts of 12 millimeter construction grade plywood that I could use. Ideally, the face grain would be running the opposite direction. That would give a cleaner cut, but again, it's just a workbench. It'll be fine. I'm going to be making these drawers in basically the same way as I always do. Pretty simple and with panels glued to the bottom for maximum strength, as I want these drawers to be able to hold a fair amount of weight. Once all my sides are cut, I can then cut the bottom panels by referencing them from the sides for dimensions, and then cutting them with the track saw. The drawer sides then get glued and pinned together. And then I can glue on the bottoms and add brad nails along one of the long edges. And I can then use the bottom panel to pull the box into square and add the rest of the brads. Then I stack them up and add a couple of clamps and some weights until the glue dried. You probably won't be surprised if I tell you that the drawer runners that I'm going to be using are also salvaged. I got these from various old bits of furniture and a couple of them had these little metal tabs on them which would have been in the way. So I just cut those off with a grinder and then they're ready to use. I get them secured in place to the sides of the drawers. And I'm using some spacers here just to get the cabinet part of the runners installed. This just helps keep them spaced equally and also level. Before I check if the drawers fit, I wanted to talk quickly about the clearance needed for this style of drawer runner, as you don't usually get instructions with them when you buy them new. Usually I allow 12 millimeter clearance on each side, but I often find that they fit too tight. So in the past I've had to remove material from the drawer box to get it to fit. This time though, I thought I'd try allowing 13 millimeters on each side and here's how it went. The first one was perfect. I used a smaller spacer here to get the spacing between the drawers. The second one, perfect as well. 
and the third and fourth also perfect. So if you're using this style of draw runners, I definitely recommend allowing 13 millimeters clearance for each runner. A company called GBL Casters got in touch with me recently and asked if I wanted to try out these workbench casters. And it was perfect timing really because I was already planning this build. And they looked interesting, so of course I said yes. The instructions say to drill the first holes two inches from the bottom, so that's what I'm marking up here. After fitting these flappy paddle things, you then just bolt the wheels onto this metal plate and that's all there is to it. They're easy to fit and they work pretty good and they're rated up to 225 kilograms, which is more than enough for this. I'll leave some links in the description box if you're interested in these. They also sent me another set of casters that I decided to use to replace the ones on my other workbench as the ones I had fitted were not locking ones and with this new set all four of the casters lock rather than just two of them which is usually what you get in a set of four. So that's going to be useful and these ones are rated up to 600 kilograms. Next I needed a way to secure the tops of the carcass so here I'm drilling some pilot holes so I can secure these two bits of pine to the inside of the frame and then I drill some holes ready for securing the top to those cleats. I had an offcut of MR MDF from when I made my large workbench that was almost the perfect size for this new bench. I just needed to trim off a little with a track saw and then I could fit it. You can see here I've left quite a big overhang on each end, but that'll be handy if I ever need to clamp anything to the bench. I had a piece of ply with a sapili veneer which I could use to make some drawer fronts. I wouldn't normally use a nice piece of plywood like this on a workshop project, but it had a bad warp to it, and also it happened to be the perfect size to cut four drawer fronts from, so I went for it. After cutting them to size, I applied some hot glue and then I can get them positioned. It takes a few seconds for the glue to grab and then I can secure it from the inside with screws. And then I can work my way up doing each drawer and I'm using a couple of shims just to get two millimeters spacing between each drawer front. Here I'm ripping some thin strips of hardwood that I can use for trimming the edges of the MDF. These pieces get cut to length and then glued to the edges using masking tape. And these pieces are so thin that I didn't bother with mitre joints. I just made sure that the front and back pieces overlap the sides to hide the end grain when you're looking at the bench from the front. The masking tape I use has a bit of stretch to it, so it's perfect for pulling in these pieces nice and tight to the MDF. The reason I'm adding these trim pieces is that it will make the MDF edges more hard wearing and durable. Once the glue was dry, I got the tape removed and then I used my hand plane to add a chamfer to remove the aris from the trim. That'll stop the wood from splintering and also make it nicer to touch. Normally I'd use my block plane for this, but that was in the house, so I just grabbed the number four hand plane as it was close to hand. I can then sand the trim nice and flush with some 120 grit. And I also did some sanding to the drawers. I'm not going for a super smooth finish here, Again, it's just a workbench. I just want to make sure there's no splintering, really. And as these drawer fronts have a thin veneer, I sand those by hand. I then apply some water-based varnish. This is my go-to finish when I want something durable. I also add some India ink to the edges of the drawer fronts just so they wouldn't stand out so much. And that'll create a nice shadow line in between each of the drawers and it'll help hide the edge grain of the plywood. When the varnish was dry, I denibbed at 400 grit and added more varnish and I gave the top four coats in total because I want it to be really nice and durable. When we ripped out our old kitchen last year, I kept all of the handles from the units so that I could reuse them. So not only did the cabinet doors from that kitchen get reused on the bedside table project, I'll leave a link to that video in the description box below too, but the handles will too and I'll probably use the hinges someday as well. I'm going to make a really simple jig to mount the handles. I mark the center point onto a scrap piece of plywood and then square that off. Then I mark up how far I want the screws so that the handles will sit in the center of the width of the drawer fronts. And then I mark up and drill the hole positions. I then add a scrap piece of wood to the top to use as a fence and continue that center line onto that. 
And then I can just offer up the jig to a center point on each draw and drill the holes for a perfect consistent placement of each handle every time. And that just saves a lot of time measuring and marking. Finally, I added some scraps of plywood to the inside of the drawers to help organize everything. These were just held in place with brad nails and no glue so that if I ever want to remove them or change things, I can just prise them off. I'm sure you'll all be desperate to see what's inside my drawers. So here's a tour of the drawers. On the left here, I've got all of my dust extraction adapters and my card scrapers, then screwdrivers, other tools like pliers, pincers, and Allen keys. And then I've got lots of glue spreaders, my awls, and my digital calipers. Next drawer down, I have files and rasps, router accessories, sharpening supplies, brad nails and staples, and some knives, epoxy and super glue, air compressor stuff, steel wool, and paint brushes and roller supplies. And then I've got my rags here, which I'm running low on at the moment, and all of my tool manuals. Oh, and look what else I found. These are the decals from when I made my guitar. Um, so these are the headstock decals, the spare ones that I didn't use. So that's the workbench done and I'm pleased with how it turned out. It's a huge improvement on what I had before. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to my channel for more weekly woodworking videos. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can do that via PayPal or Patreon. Links to those in the description box. And on Patreon, you can also get early access to my videos, exclusive content, free project plans and cut lists, and a name credit at the end of my videos. Thank you for watching.